Hi, my name is Janelle and welcome to my Nollywood Diary. It's rather unfortunate that the COVID-19 still persists. My heart goes out to everyone who's been affected one way or the other. I think we'll all have been affected, including my humble self. Well, the cinemas are still closed and the lockdown seems to be tightening its nose around us. So I went down, down memory lane to a movie that's more than a decade ago. This movie was premiered at the London African Film Festival, the New York African Film Festival, Tokyo African Film Festival and Rotterdam International Film Festival. It was praised for its top-notch cinematography, props and for being the movie to finally break the jinx of mediocrity in Nollywood. This movie met with widespread spread critical acclaim and received 10 nominations and won five awards at the sixth african movie academy awards it was the movie with the most wins at the ceremony a book was released in honor of this movie and it's the first book in the history of nigerian cinema to be devoted to the work of a single nigerian film director and it was also welcomed with positive reviews this movie is also being used as a subject of educational studies of some higher institutions. You might be wondering, what movie is she ranting about? Can you guess? It's The Figurine Araro Miri. It's a supernatural suspense thriller about three friends, more like a triangular relationship. Right from their university days, Femi the Ned was in love with Mona and never had the courage to express his love. But Shola, the player, was way ahead of him, got her pregnant and put a ring to it. After the National Youth Service, great luck, fortune, healing and health were bestowed upon both Shola and Femi. And Femi traveled out of the country only to return after seven years. Calamity fell on both Shola and and Femi and it seemed like their lives were wrenched from them. This made Mona to seek the truth and she found out that they had taken a figurine from their National Youth Service Camp during the service year. This was no ordinary figurine. It was a deity, Ara Romiri, the goddess of fortune and luck, which the people named after themselves and their community, which so happens to be where Shola, Femi and Mona served their fatherland. Folklore says Araro Miri prospers her people for seven years, after which destruction, plague, mystery, and death for the next seven years. It was even said that she struck down her own priest that served her. Will the same apply to them? How real is the folklore? Or was someone manipulating ancient history for their personal and selfish gain? Will marriage stop Shola's philandering ways? Did Femi's love for Mona eventually die or... Many, many questions. Find out. The movie was unbelievably long. Two freaking hours with lots of irrelevant scenes. Jeez, man. Huh. The suspense took a lot of time to build up and a lot of excesses could have been cut out. Aside the major actors, they did fantastically well. The minor actors were terrible. Ramsinua played Femi's character and the makeup, especially the hair, was terrible at the beginning. It was like paper mache. There were other things, sha, little things, but I will let it slide because this movie is almost a decade ago. The storyline is captivating, strangely reminds me of Gold Stature. You can check my review on it at JanelleSnollywoodDiary.com. I love the voice of Labaja, who was the narrator. So warm and pleasant, and the way he pronounced the people's name, Araro Mire. It was like music to my ears. You see this scene? Hmm? The outfit, Sha. <laughs> oh, I love the scene. I'm such a romantic at heart. Though it took a long time coming, the twist at the end was fantastic and so unpredictable. At the end of the movie, you'll be forced to question whether the events in the story are just life, a coincidence, or the curse of the figurine. Good one. I rate this movie a three star. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and comment on our social media handles. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.